Hi folks, Thomas Henson here with thomashenson.com and today is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. And so today's question is, what is the Lambda architecture and how does that relate to our Big Data Hadoop ecosystem? Find out right after this. So when we talk about the Lambda architecture and how that's implemented in Hadoop, we have to go back and look at Hadoop 1.0 and 2.0 when we really didn't have a speed layer or spark for streaming analytics. And so back in the traditional days of Hadoop 1.0 and 2.0, we were using MapReduce for most of our processing. And so the way that that would work is our data would come in, we would pull our data into HDFS. Once our data was in HDFS, we would run some kind of MapReduce job. So, you know, we'd either use PIG or Hive or write our own custom job or some of the other frameworks that are in the ecosystem. So that was all, you know, more, mostly transactional, right? So all our data had to be in HDFS. So we had to have a complete view of our data to be able to process it. Later on, we started looking at it and seeing that, hey, we need to be able to pull data in and do it in when data is not really complete, right? So in less transactional, when we maybe have incomplete parts of the data or the data is continuing to be updated. And so that's where Spark and Flink and some of the other streaming analytics and streaming processing engines came in, is that we wanted to be able to process that data as it came, came in and do it a lot faster too. And so we took out the need really to even put it into HDFS for when we first were starting to process it, because that takes time too, right? So we wanted to be able to move our data and process it before it even hit you know, our HDFS and our disk and that, that whole system. But we still needed to be able to process that for batch processing, right? So some analytics, some data that we're going to pull, we want to do that in real time, right? But then there's other insights like maybe some monthly reports, quarterly reports that are just better for transactional, right? And even when we start to talk about, you know, how we're going to process and hold on to historical data and kind of use it as a traditional enterprise data warehouse, but in a larger, you know, more Hadoop platform basis like Hive, um, Presto, and some of the other SQL engines that are working on top of Hadoop. And so the need came where we were having these two different, you know, two different systems and how we were going to process data. So we started adapting the Lambda architecture. And so what the Lambda architecture was, was as your data come in, it would sit in maybe a queue. So maybe you could have it sitting in Kafka or just some kind of message queue. Any data that needed to be pulled out and processed streaming, we would take and we would process that in what we would call our speed layer. So we'd have our speed layer maybe using Spark or Flink to pull out some insights and push those right out to our dashboards for our data that was going to exist for batch and for the you know, transactional processing and just holding on for historical data, we would have our MapReduce layer so, or our batch layer. And so if you think about two different prongs, so you have your speed layer coming in here, pulling out your insights, but your data as it sits in the queue goes into HDFS and still there to you know, run Hive on top of or to hold on for historical data or maybe to still run some uh, MapReduce jobs and pull out to a dashboard. And so what we would have is you have the two pronged approach there with your speed layer being with your speed layer being on top and then your batch layer being on the bottom and then so as that data would come in you still have your data in hdfs but you'll still be able to pull your data from you know your real-time processing as that data is coming in and so that's what we started talking about when we were saying lambda architecture is just a two two layer system to be able to do our map reduce and our batch jobs and then also a speed layer to do our streaming analytics you know whether it be through spark flink or um, apache beam and some of the other pieces so it's a really good process to know. It's, and you know, it's something that's been in the industry for a, quite a long time. So if you're new to the Hadoop environment, definitely want to know and be able to reference it back to it. But um, there are some other architectures that we'll talk about in some future episodes. So make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. So go right now and subscribe so that the next time that we talk about an architecture that you don't miss it. And um, I'll check back with you next time. Thanks, folks.